Hey, what's up guys? Tukey here, back again with another episode of my Seattle Sea Cattle franchise mode series right here on NHL 18. And today, we take on the San Jose Sharks in the second round. We survived one hell of a scare having to win a couple games in a row that weren't stressful at all against the St. Louis Blues just to make it to this point despite having our best season ever. We survived that threat and now we are here again the second round against the San Jose Sharks. A big question heading into this episode, at least for me, was what to do lineup wise we made a lot of changes throughout that st louis series trying to see what players uh, felt like actually showing up this postseason this is the lineup that we're going to start the series with and basically what i did uh, is i went through uh, added all the players back to the team that deserved to be here and went best lines just to see who would make it and case in point where you know, we have a left wing on the fourth line uh, who's playing on the right side rather than bradley sid who actually being in the lineup. So I am going to go with the best line option. This is what the team is going to look like to start defensively. Bishop is back on the squad. And Oshi, who was miserable against St. Louis. We will see if he can return to form. If not, we will go to Hargrave. But needless to say, there was a little bit of doubt in Oshi among the viewers at this point. Rightfully so, when you look at what uh, one Joseph Hainsey has done elsewhere. So this is Oshi's moment. It's his time to shine. It's his time to win back uh, yours and my faith at this point in time. We'll see what he can do here against this Sharks team. Wow. This could be trouble. This could be awful. I just, wow. Okay. No, let's, let's. Let's talk about it. Top line left wing. You would have seen his name a lot, whether on the you know top scores every year or awards. It is Alan Yasina. Now 31 years old, uh, drafted right around the same time as Trent, and he is an absolute monster. Centered by 38-year-old Nick Schmaltz, and on the right is Dave Moore, a former fifth overall selection. Uh, the top six in terms of wingers, quite strong. The center depth is a big question mark, although now they'll kill us. Second line left wing is Ken Keith. Oh my god. Centered by Pavel Zikov, a former second round pick of the Sharks. And Bear McCann, another familiar name, one of the great names of this series. The left wings, uh, just the wingers in general in the top six. Oh my god, how are we going to deal with that? Third line, we have Ricard Tarvinen with Harold Brower and Edward Bonvi. The fourth line is Matthias Brodine, Stefan Boudreaux, and Kent Solnishkin. I do want to take a look, though, at the points. So the fourth line's been okay. Third line's been okay. Tarvinen's a goal scorer. Uh, top six, okay numbers through the first round. That top line's really delivering, though. Defensively... <sighs> And this is where that proper balance kicks in to allow them to be such a good team because that offense is pretty well stacked. Defensively, it's a little bit weak. The top pairing of Rory Whitney with Christopher Boudreaux. Second pairing of Blake Bomez and Raimo Tarvinen. Third pairing, if the trigger wants to work, there we go, is James Perry and Willie Kilger. As you get a look at some of the stat numbers, that second pairing is getting ripped apart. That top pairing, though, is a plus six. The goaltender... Cam Campagna, Joe Montagna, Champagne, the, the Campagans, double C, Cam Cam is their goaltender. Nicholas Weeding is their backup goaltender. Cam Cam had a 927 save percentage. The healthy scratches, Gene Yakubov, uh, Pavel Kaminsky, and Lewis Rammer. As always, when we look at these lineups, I, I always try to find out uh, how am I feeling. <laughs> I try to I try to find out how I'm feeling. Like I need to like it's a fucking treasure hunt. I, I try to really dissect how I'm feeling at the moment, whether or not I'm more confident or not. I don't know. That top six is obviously scary. That defense is weak, and they have a great goaltender. Like that is the typical mix of players 
that leads to success throughout the EA Sim, but maybe it's our year. I don't know what to expect, but let's get down to it. Game one of our second round matchup against the Sharks. We are on home ice. Let's see what we can do with it. We defended home ice well against the Blues, and then it all fell apart from there. Oh, boy. Let's do this. First period of game one, and that's a fine start. Bits gets the opening goal on Cam Cam just about midway through the period. 11 shots each, but the early lead for the Sea Cattle. Second period is scoreless. They're... <laughs> They have a considerable uh, advantage in the shot total now, 24 to 17. But we still have the difference maker from bits. Third period, we don't need to hype it up anymore. Come on. Can this team deliver? Power play chance here early on for the Sharks. That is killed off. Can we find a way to get an insurance goal? Keith strikes and ties this game up. We have a power play opportunity that can we take advantage of? No, we can't. The Sharks have one of their own. That is killed off. Two minutes to go. Next goal wins. But we are going to have to wait until overtime to find out who it's going to be. 34 shots to 27 in their favor. We are tied at one on the board. It's going to come down to Rogalski or McCann. That's my guess. Overtime. Can we survive this threat? Early power play opportunity that we can't take advantage of. We also kill off the Sharks' chance and McChesney. Oh my God! Of all people to get the winner, it's McChesney, who had an incredibly disappointing regular season, was scratched in the last episode. He comes back and gets the game winner. It's a 2 1 victory for the Sea Cattle in game one. 35 shots to 30 in their favor. I will take it. Oshi, the first star of the game with 34 saves. McChesney, the second star, and Cam Cam was up there as the third star. Obvious concerns coming out of that game. Our lack of ability to take advantage on the power play. I phrased that very awkwardly. But Keith Moore, a slashing minor by Keith to begin the period. It's a little bit rough. Reza and Mele, the assists on the McChesney goal. I will admit, it is about 95 degrees in this room with this air conditioner off. I need to have the air conditioner off because it has way too much background noise. So I am off my game. It's like sitting in a sauna and trying to record, although I already recorded the Blue Jays episode before this. And that was kind of a weird one and stressful. So it's, it's a weird situation right now. But damn it, I'm doing the best I can. Game two... We won't make any lineup changes yet, although, you know me, I'm not exactly afraid to pull the trigger on lineup changes. Game two on home ice. Can we have a repeat of what happened in the Blues series? Hopefully with the same results. First period, and this time the Sharks get on the board first. It is Alan Yasina to the surprise of absolutely nobody. We're not able to keep him off the score sheet early on in this series. Second period is scoreless, 22 shots to 21. They were out shooting us heavily at the end of the first period. We fought back well, but we've been unable to get a goal past Cam Cam. Third period, let's not hype it up. Let's just go for it. Come on. We can do this. Yes, Rogalski gets a goal quickly, under five minutes, under four minutes into the period. We have another power play opportunity. Can we take advantage of it? We cannot. We're halfway through the third. Another power play opportunity. It's an extended power play. Please. God, Schmaltz, I hate you. What the hell is with our power play? Oh, my God. We had about 18 minutes worth of power play time there, and Nick Schmaltz gets a shorthanded goal to win the game. 35 saves for Cam Cam, 2.9 for Schmaltz. A solid game from Oshie, but his team in front of him let him down. Make no mistake, look at that. That is disgusting. Tarvinen, Zikoff, and more. And we couldn't capitalize on that. We didn't deserve to win, flat out. We did not deserve to win. If we're not going to be able to take advantage of that much time on the power play, we don't deserve to win. I have no idea what the hell's going on outside of my window, but I'm kind of concerned. If, if I die and someone finds this audio... Uh, tell my parents I love them. And, uh, yeah, go Bruins. <laughs> anyway, I think we're good for the moment. 
Oh boy, do I want to make any changes for game theory? I think I have to, at the very least, to the power play. But let's take a look at the lines. So 8 points for Rogalski, a plus 1. 6 points for Trent, a plus 2. And the 10 points for Tanel. On the second line, Jonas is a minus 1. Only 4 points for Kyler, so I think we're going to drop him out of the top 6. Klo, 1 point and a minus 1. 3 points for Machesny, and nothing from Sutter. That is... That is horrific. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go Jonas, Bengoa, Tanel, Rogalski, Machesny, Belfour. And then four points for Baraball. Really nothing from Lorenz. Right. So we're going to go Baraball, Yamamoto. And from there, I'm not sure who really deserves to stay. They're all kind of struggling. I mean, Sidhu, Vol, Cam Hughes. All I'd have to do is call up one other guy. So you know what? Sutter, Klo, Lorenz, and Bits. I think you guys are out of it. I think you are out of it. Sutter, Klo, Lorenz. We'll send you down. And we'll also send down Bits. And we will call up Rintoul and give him an opportunity. I'm not going to keep players in the lineup that aren't performing. We have tried so many different lineup combinations. Eventually it just comes down to we have underperforming players. And we'll see how it goes. Um, again, we'll keep Belfour there. We'll move Kyler over. And then let's see. Baraball. Sid, who has two points. I'm very worried about that fourth line. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I think I can play Sid, who at center. Yeah, I can. So we'll do it that way. These will be the lines for this next game. Defensively, nothing from Wakabayashi point-wise. And that third pairing just cannot get it done. So Mele is a minus player. Let's see. I mean, we have three minus players and two pluses. So that is the change that we're going to have to make. We'll have the minus players on the right, the positives on the left. And we'll do it that way. O'Donnell, Mele, Reza, Parker, Wakabayashi, and Bishop. Goaltender still going to be Oshie's back up to a 9.15 save percentage. So that is promising. The power play, I don't know if it's really changed. Let's see, two righties, two lefties. Let's change that at least. Let's go Wakabayashi, O'Donnell, Parker, and Mele. Put Rogalski over on that side. And we'll see how that goes. Actually, I'm going to reunite Rogalski there. We'll see how that goes on the power play. And down in the AHL, just go best lines. Of course, Tacoma is already out. So they were swept in the first round. So we split the first two games at home. Not a complete disaster, but certainly not ideal. The series shifts to San Jose for games three and four. Let's get it underway. Massive lineup changes yet again, trying to spark something with this team after a fairly poor effort in game two. First period of game three, and it's a goal apiece. It's Moore and Hamhus with the goals, 11 shots each. That is as even as it gets. Second period, and we take the lead. No, we don't. It's Brower. It is Brower. I mistook the logo. I mistook the logo. That is, uh, that's embarrassing now, isn't it? And unfortunate, because now we're losing. 23 shots to 18, 2 to 1 in their favor. Not good. Not good. Third period underway. And now I'm slightly worried. We're struggling to get goals here against Cam Cam. Halfway through the third period, we're being outshot. All it takes is one, though. Five minutes to go in the third period. Can we please score more than one goal? No, we cannot. No, we cannot. It's a 2-1 final again for San Jose. Harold Brower with the game winner. Right. Three straight 2-1 finishes, actually. The last two in regulation, and we are down two games to one in the series, and needless to say, I am extremely concerned. We don't have anybody that can score goals, apparently. I I don't know what to do. Like, do I split up Ben Goa and Tanel? Trent has done nothing in the series, neither has Jonas or Rogalski. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Tanel on the top line, Bengoa on the second line, 
Rogalski on the third line, Jonas on the fourth line. Is it insane? Yes. But damn it, we need something to work. Uh, Rintoul is a minus three with one point. Uh, Sidhu can stay, Barabal can stay, Volk is a minus two. All right, so Volk at a minus two. We'll just say that Rintoul is a minus two as well. Is there anybody who was better? Of course, it's going to show fucking triple A stats. Triple A stats. God damn it. Did I mention I, uh, did I mention that it's hot in here? And I recorded an episode of the uh, Blue Jay series before this. All right. Sutter, Klo, Lorenz. I just need to see your playoff stats, basically. Let me take a look. So Sutter was at least a minus one with no points. Lorenz, minus two with one point, and Klo was a minus one with one point. So say we call up Sutter. I'm going to drop Valk. I'm going to bring back Bits, considering he scored earlier on. I'm going to drop Rintoul if it wants to select him, please, or not. I've already selected three, my bad. Uh, let's drop Rin. Nope, come on now. Drop Rintoul. Thank you very much. So let's see how well this works. As again, we just continue to throw anything at the wall that we can to try and find success. So in terms of centers, we're good. In terms of right wings, we're pretty much... Actually, I'm going to move Sidhu over, I guess. It could be Sidhu or Bits. I think it's going to be Bits. So the right side, Tanelli, Yamamoto, Sutter, Bits. I'm okay with that. Centers, I'm okay with that. Left wings... I'm good with that. That works. So Manny Jonas is going to be the guy that has the least amount to work with. And then defensively, again, these three have just been hot garbage. We're going to have Mele, Bishop, Parker. Who's been better between Reza and Wakabayashi? We'll go with Wakabayashi off of the plus minus. So that, uh, that is that. Right. Not quite sure how I feel about it, but it's what we're going with. I mean, I'm just trying to do anything I can to spark some goal scoring from this team. I mean, granted, they've been close defensive affairs, but I just, uh, I don't know. I feel like with their defense, we should be able to put up more goals than what we are. But I don't know. We'll see what happens here. Game four, it's either we're going back to Seattle with a tied series, or we're going back down 3-1 to one in the series, which would be an absolute disaster for us. So let's see what we can do. First period, and there we go. Parker, thank you very much. You've been arguably our worst defenseman this postseason, but he gets the opening goal of this game. Ten shots to seven in their favor, but we are up one nothing early. Second period, we're able to not only maintain the lead, but we're able to add to it Kyler Yamamoto with the goal. We're up 2 to nothing, 18 shots to 16, and we're in a very promising spot. However, crazy things have happened in the past. Although, Cedric Baraball with a gigantic goal for us. We're up 3 to nothing. Power play opportunity here halfway through the period. We're not able to convert, but we're still up 3 to nothing with 6 minutes to go. That should do it. And the Seattle Sea Cattle finally find their offensive touch 34 shots to 20 three to nothing on the board shout out to joshua oshi the 20 save shout out parker with two points trent ben goa with two points a goal in each period and as mentioned this series is tied it is a best of three from this point on both teams six and five in the postseason we have home ice through these three games i'm going to keep the lines the same mainly for the sake of time, but also because we won in impressive fashion. It is game five. Let's get right into it. First period. Can we get off to a good start? No, we cannot. It's Keith with the opening goal. Just under four minutes into it, they outshot us 10-6. to six. Second period. Can we get back into it? Not yet, at least. one nothing Sharks through 40 minutes. 25 shots to just 13. So clearly they did something to kind of spark changes. They're shutting us down defensively, which again is unacceptable given what their defense looks like. Third period, we need a turnaround here or we are facing elimination 
in game six back in San Jose. Power play chance here for the Sharks. That is killed off. We're halfway through the third. We need a goal, and Bear McCann makes it two to nothing. And I think that score line's gonna hold. We trade shutouts from a three nothing shutout victory to a two nothing shutout defeat. The San Jose Sharks have a three two series lead. We are facing elimination in game six. And again, we might have to address this lineup as the inconsistency with this team is absolutely killing me. Let's take a look here. Uh, Barabal, five points and a plus one. Bell, four, seven points and a plus two. Tommy Tunnell. All right. You know what? Different tactic here. Who's just been the best? So we'll consider Brent Bits a minus three. We'll look at the plus minus and the points total. Bits is a minus three. Ham Hughes is an even. And we have a five for Jonas. Right. How's Sutter done? He's a minus two. That's good. Right. So Sutter, you'll go ahead and get dropped over here. McChesney is a two. So we'll drop him below Jonas, who was a five. And we will uh, keep him above Ham Hughes, who is an even. So McChesney's at a two. Rogalski's at an eight. So at least Pete Rogalski's still killing it. Yamamoto is at a six. Not bad. Still drop him below Rogalski. Why am I doing it this way? Why the hell not? <laughs> is, is really the question. Just trying to do whatever the hell we can, because every time I go with our best lines, every time I optimize this, we have one good game, and then we just completely shut down. So, we have to keep our players on their toes, clearly. Uh, Trent is arguably our best player. Sidhu, at a, he's at a six. That's not bad. It's not bad. Kyler Yamamoto level. I'm going to give Yamamoto the, uh, the improvement. Tanel actually has been our best player. Bell 4 is at a 9. That's also not too shabby. Um, we will put him just above Rogalski. So Bell 4, in fairness, has been pretty good. And then we have Baraball at a 6. So he would be uh, behind Rogalski but ahead of Kyler? Even with Kyler. Okay. So again, we have a 6. Uh, we have a, I mean, just a 4 for Jonas, which is killing me. We have a two for McChesney. So, I mean, still, Jonas would be on the fourth line. I think that pretty much sorted it, right? Yeah, that pretty much sorted it. So, Brent Bits is absolutely sitting. Uh, Sutter and Hamhuse will also probably sit. Why not? The question is, who the hell do we bring in <laughs> to try and spark change here? Lawrence, Clove, Alk, Rintoul. I mean, we've played Redden before. Why not? What's the worst that happens? What, we lose another game? <laughs> All right, who else is going to sit aside from Brent Bitts? Who else is taking the back seat? Is it going to be Sutter or Ham Hughes? It's going to be it's going to be Sutter. Didn't mean to go to return to default. Return to default. Sutter, take a seat. You're incredibly disappointing. And I don't want you in this lineup right now. Anderson Dolan and Jake Bengoa are being introduced. And as far as what the hell we're shaping up to do here, I don't quite know. I mean, really. Okay. At Bell 4 ahead of Yamamoto. And then as far as this goes, so again, we had a 6. Sidhu also had a 6. I think that works. So Anderson Dolan, Ham Houston, Jake Bengoa, Baraball, Machesny, Yamamoto, Jonas, Sidhu, Belfour, Rogalski, Bengoa, Tanel. We'll reunite that top line. Or No. We we need we need something special here, don't we? We need something special here, don't we? Machesny, not that great, so we'll drop him down. Let's go Belfour there. That works. Rogalski, Bengoa, Bengoa, Jonas, Belfort, Tanel, Baraball, Sidhu, Yamamoto, Anderson, Dolan, Ham, Hughes, and we'll have, uh, actually, I'll probably play, yeah, eh, Ham, Hughes can stay there. That's fine. Defensively, 
same thing where it's just like, what the hell do we look to do? I guess melee Bishop Parker. Again, Parker has continued to be absolutely awful. But that is the team. Because nobody wants to perform, apparently. And because I've clearly lost my mind. Game 6 is the addition of Anderson Dolan and Jake Bengoa enough to spark this team to a Game 7. Let's find out. Will our best season yet, and arguably our best chance ever at winning a cup, will that chance end here? First period, Game 6. And the Sharks get the opening goal. It's Keith. They outshot us 12-9. Second period. And Pete Rogalski, who has been known to just decide to want to take over, gets a hat trick within six minutes. <laughs> Tarvinen gets a goal back with 22 seconds to go. I'm not sure if it was the forward or the defenseman. But we have a 3-2 lead. The shots are just about even. And you can tell in my voice, at least I think you could... I want to be excited about this, but I can't be overly enthusiastic. I'm still quite nervous. Pete Rogalski, with one hell of an effort, and he will go down as a hero for that performance if we win this series, but unfortunately, uh, we still have 20 minutes to go in regulation and potentially a Game 7, but the, we'll, we'll put potentially in big, bold letters as not guaranteed. We're not able to take advantage of that power play chance, but we are halfway through the third period. We really could use an insurance goal, and now it's going to have to be a winner. Bear McCann ties it up. Two minutes remaining. Can we get the win in regulation? We cannot, and we are going to overtime for the second time in this series. Tied at three. The season is on the line. We need the next goal or we are done here. It comes down to this. Win and force game seven or lose and have our season end in horrifically disappointing fashion. <sighs> Boy, here we go. Here we go. Overtime in game six on the road in San Jose. Trent wins the opening draw. O'Donnell turns it over to Yasina. Around the back, it's Moore. Up to the point, and the puck passes him. Goes all the way back to the shark zone. Come on, we need this. Ben Goa. No, Rogalski on the four check, and he is denied. A good chance there for Pete Rogalski, single handedly getting us to this point. Moore carrying in, looking for space. Moore taking a tour of the zone and a big save there by Oshi. Trent Bengoa through the neutral zone and over the blue line. He loses the puck to Bureau, who sends it around the back. Rogalski trying to recover. He loses it. Yasina battling Trent. Rogalski's there, and he's denied again by Cam Cam. It's Melee to O'Donnell. Rogalski is there. Two more chances. Oh, my God. What an effort. What an effort from Cam Campagna. Jake Bengoa loses it. It's Jordan Schmaltz, the 38-year-old veteran. He loses the puck on the back check, and the Sharks will change lines. Wakabayashi. Through the neutral zone, looking for the pass. He turns it over. Bureau. Another turnover in the neutral zone. Belfour to Manny Jonas. He'll send it around. Belfour gives chase. Is he able to recover? He's not. The Sharks get it. Contact, though. Belfour does recover now. Around the back to Manny Jonas, up to the point. Wakabayashi having trouble running into the boards for the second time. Up to the point, it's Bishop. Now Tanel. Pass is broken up through the middle. Jonas. Back for Bell for Wakabayashi. See Cattle continuing with the puck. Wakabayashi's shot is blocked. Down low for Bell for. Jonas, now Bishop. Reza, hot off the bench, looking for space. Finds Tanel. Who gets double teamed on the sideboards and loses the puck. Puck's loose and the Sharks are covered. Tarvinen through the neutral zone. Cut back. Finds the other Tarvinen off the bench. And Oshi is able to make the save. A close call there. A couple of amazing, more than a couple of amazing chances for Rogalski. We are still tied. 31 saves now on the night for Oshi. Puck thrown on. 
Parker recovers, loses it to Brower. A big save, another chance for Brower. And Oshie makes the save. Couple of chances for the Sharks here. Now at the point, it's Kilger, Perry. Now Kilger yet again, he loses the puck to Cedric Baraball. Who's able to recover and find Reza. Now Sidhu through the neutral zone. Over to Kyle Yamamoto and back now. Sidhu looking for space, takes the shot. May have been saved, I think it went wide. Tarvinen carrying through. Cuts to the outside. Back for Brower, and he sends it down low. Perry's able to recover at the point. Loses it, though. Baraball runs through, and now it's Cedric Baraball on the rush. Help coming. Baraball's shot is stopped by Campagna. The Campagans. The Champagna. Cam Cam with the saves. A couple of big chances there for Brower as well. Good opportunities at both ends of the ice so far, yet we are still tied. A somewhat tired third line now out for the Sea Cattle against a fresh fourth line for the Sharks. Sidhu wins the draw. It's O'Donnell. Now Mele tries to send it down low, and the help wasn't there. Perry recovers. Breakout pass for Brodeen. He'll dump it in. O'Donnell having trouble on the boards because this game's programmed in a weird way. Let's call it weird. O'Donnell, though, recovers. Looking to break out. Evan O'Donnell. Looking for a pass. Can't find anybody. Does finally find Melee. Shots on. Big save there for Cam Cam. Ham Hughes recovers it on the forecheck. Over for Anderson Dolan. Back on the team and he draws a hooking call. The Sea Cattle are going to the power play. One goal away from forcing a game seven back on home ice. Jared Anderson Dolan back in this lineup for the first time in many years. Draws the hook and call on Willie Kilger. Tanell, Trent, and Jonas are out against Schmaltz and Sholnishkin. Ben Goa wins the draw. Wakabayashi tries to fall back to O'Donnell and misses. Actually, it wasn't O'Donnell. It was Parker. Excuse me. Tommy Tanell, though. Cross to the blue line. Wakabayashi, now Parker. Back down low for Tanell in front for Manny Jonas, and he couldn't tuck it on the short side. And not much of a forecheck there from the Sea Cattle, and the Sharks will easily clear. Wakabayashi recovers, looking to lead the breakout. It's Parker and now Tanel. Cross ice, Trent Bangoa leading through. Trent tries to take the shot, it gets broken up. Perry is able to clear. 122 remaining on the power play. Wakabayashi recovers behind the Sea Cattle goal. Over for Jonas, and now Parker leading the rush. Three on two here for the Sea Cattle. Cut back. Finds Kyle Yamamoto off the bench. It's Wakabayashi stepping in for Yamamoto and a big save from Cam Cam. Yamamoto in front and a huge save again. The Sea Cattle cannot buy a goal. Kyler Yamamoto stepping in, gets bumped off the puck by Bayuro. Yamamoto on the doorstep. Couldn't poke home a loose puck. Cam. Campagna, Campagna, Cam Cam is killing us here. Rogalski, Belfour, and Yamamoto are out. 53 seconds remaining on the power play. Face off one in the offensive zone. It's O'Donnell and now Mele. Yamamoto back up to the point. O'Donnell takes the shot. It's blocked down. Tarvinen struggling to clear the kick to tape. He recovers though. And will dump it in as he crosses the red line. Oh, she stops it around the back. 36 seconds remaining on the power play here. Rogalski gets it to Belfour, takes a hit to do so. Stephen Belfour, slap shot, and the stick breaks. Whitney recovers around the back of the goal and will dump it in. Melee, though, is able to recover and then turns it over to Brodeen. It's Moore looking for space. Tries to find the pass. O'Donnell breaks it up, and now Yamamoto. Kyler Yamamoto speeding through on the breakaway. He's denied. <laughs> Yamamoto, though, still battling. Short side tuck is denied. Still battling for it. The puck is dumped out, and the Sharks have killed off the penalty. A great chance there for Kyler Yamamoto. Wakabayashi is called. I'm not sure for what. But the Sharks now will have a power play chance of their own. Wakabayashi, what is that for? Cross-checking. Apparently that was cross-checking. And the Sharks, who are 0 for 1 on the power play, have an opportunity 
to win this game in this series right here. It's Moore. Pass in front was deflected. Yasina over for Moore and out of the point. Whitney back in front. Again, a shot's broken up. Parker will clear. Huge opportunity wasted for the Sea Cattle. They could not find a way to beat Cam Cam. The Sharks again now with their own chance. Here's Yasina over the blue line. Finds Moore. Can't get the shot off. Yasina looking to recover. Pass to the points broken up. San Jose recovers though. Bureau. Pass in front broken up. Yasina looking for the chance. And now it's Anderson Dolan who will send it straight into the Sharks bench. Face off will come back into the Sea Cattle zone. Jake Bengoa and Ham Hughes are out on this penalty kill against Keith Schmaltz and McCann. Reza having trouble with McCann in front for Jordan Schmaltz and Oshi with a robbery. The glove save on Nick Schmaltz. Jordan, yeah, Nick Schmaltz, not Jordan Small. Still, you get the point. I'm nervous. I'm freaking out. Thought that was going to be it. We've seen overtimes end in 18 seconds. We've seen overtimes go the distance. Oh, boy. Ham Hughes on the draw. He gets the win as Sid, who recovers and dumps it out. Three forwards out there, by the way. Thanks to Wakabayashi being in the box. Bureau recovers. He finds McCann. Bear McCann across the blue line. Takes the shot. Another glove save from Oshi. Keith. Now Schmaltz. It's Bureau. The shot's blocked. Schmaltz. Back to the point. McCann takes the shot. Deflection bid. Oshi makes the save. Unbelievable saves here from Oshi, Doing everything he can to keep us in it. Say what you want about how bad he was in the first round. I don't blame him whatsoever. If we lose the series, it's been the ridiculous lack of secondary scoring no matter who we have given the opportunity to. It's also been the very frustrating effort from some of our defensemen. Defensive zone draw. Parker looking to clear. Turns it over to Yasina, but Oshi is there to make the save. Mele around the back. Sharks recover. Puck in front. Brower looking for it. Mele able to get it and able to clear. 35 left on the San Jose power play. Here's Moore again. Over the red line, now over the blue line, into the Sea Cattle zone. Moore drops back for Perry. It's Tarvine at the point. Shot's broken up. Mele able to recover, not able to clear. Gets a second chance. Battle for it on the sideboards. It's Tarvine in, in space. The shot's denied. Brower recovers. Brower for Yasina. Back to the point. Sharks moving it around. Five to go on the power play. Yasina takes the shot. Deflection bid. Pucks loose. Mele recovers and clears. Both teams unable to capitalize on the power play opportunities. Yasina. Cross ice for Keith. Shot is denied by Oshi. 12-19 remaining in overtime. Certainly didn't expect this to go as long as it has. But we're here, and we're trying to make the best of it. Joshua Oshi redeeming himself. Pete Rogalski, the reason why we're here. But can we capitalize? Can we finish? Just one goal. One goal. That's all we need to get the Game 7 back on home ice. Oshi plays it out for Tanel. Belfour back for Bishop. He gets hooked. And the Sea Cattle have another chance on the power play. It's Keith going to the box, one of many high-level players on their team. He hooks Bishop, and the Sea Cattle have another power play opportunity. Rogalski, Belfour, and Yamamoto out there against a tired Solnishkin and Nick Schmaltz. Schmaltz, though, wins the draw, and Whitney is able to clear early. Sharks giving chase. They're actually going to win this puck. Solnishkin. Back for Perry. D to D. Bureau for Solnishkin. Loose puck in front. O'Donnell recovers. A near disaster there of a shorthanded goal. Here's Belfort. For Rogalski. Yamamoto. It's poked off of him. O'Donnell takes the shot. Stopped by Cam Cam. Perry battling Belfort. Belfort wins it. Tries to kick it down low. Schmaltz can't clear. Kyler Yamamoto looks to cut in front. Bureau is there. Belfort. Now O'Donnell and back. D to D here. It's Mele. Rogalski. Seacattle looking for space. 
It's O'Donnell. Belfour tried to go in front to the wide open man. It just couldn't reach. Parker's able to stop it from going all the way down. Melee for Manny Jonas. Stepping in a minute to go on the power play. Jonas back to the point. And now back again. Jonas for Parker. Rogalski blows the pass to Parker as the Sea Cattle are struggling to get offensive chances. Parker for Manny Jonas. Takes the puck down low. Back in front. It's Wakabayashi the shot. And Cam Cam makes the save. A rough go on the power play so far for the Sea Cattle. A lot of passes, but very few shooting lanes opening up. Tanel, Trent, and Jonas are out there. 37 to go. And it's another defensive zone win on the penalty kill for the San Jose Sharks. Oh boy. This is this is worrisome. Wakabayashi for Jonas. And now Parker. 22 to go on the power play. Here's Tanell for Jonas. Back for Tanell. Another big save. Tarvinen is able to dig it out of the pads. And the puck is cleared. The Sharks just moments away from a second successful penalty kill in this overtime. Tanell. Looks to carry in. Tommy Tanell looking for space. Drops it back to the point. It's Melee. Quick give and go. Melee takes the shot. Save. Rebound opportunity. Jonas cannot get there. He does recover, though. Around the back, it's Trent Bengoa. The fearless leader and captain. Bengoa. To the point, it's Melee. Now back for Tanell. He loses it, and it's Ken Keith on the breakout for the Sharks. Keith. The shot's interrupted. Looking to recover. Looking to cut in front. Big save from Oshi. Ben Goa able to somewhat kick it out for Tommy Tanell. He has a chance here. Two on two. Tanell takes the shot. Glove save from Cam Cam. We are halfway through this overtime. This is ridiculous. Big saves on both ends of the ice. In such, uh, such a stressful situation. The biggest game in Sea Cattle history. The Rogalski and Ben Goa's line. We don't have the Yamagoa line anymore. We have the the Roagoa line. I don't know. Close enough. The Sharks, another defensive zone draw victory. Carrying in here, it's Keith. Takes the shot. May have gone wide. Couldn't really tell. Regardless, here's Trent on the breakout. Over to Jake. Drops back for Rogalski. It's broken up. Loose puck in front. The Sharks are able to recover. And now it's Ken Keith on the breakout yet again. He is all over the place. Keith gets the shot. Saved by Oshi. Bishop recovers. And now it's Trent Bengoa. Up and down the ice they go. Trent looking for space. Finds Jake Bengoa. Shot and Campania, you bastard, <laughs> makes the save. Ken Keith. For Bear McCann, the shot's broken up. Wakabayashi now for Cedric Baraball. Jake Bengoa over the blue line. Bengoa finds Sidhu. The shot is stopped. Bradley Sidhu with one of the best chances of this overtime period. Cam Cam was there with the glove save, though. As you see the chance there for Jake Bengoa. Off the ankle of the man in front. Baraball, Sid Hu, and Yamamoto are out. A somewhat fresh third line against a somewhat tired second line. And it's another defensive zone victory for the Sharks. Over the blue line. Looking for a shooting lane. Takes the shot. Oshi is there on the five-hole attempt. The Sharks turning a defensive zone draw into an offensive opportunity with very little resistance. Not a good sign for us. Now it's a fresh third line out. Tarvine and Brower and Bonvi. Brower has been a pain for us. Bishop, though, is able to recover the puck on the draw. Bishop loses it on the sideboards. Recovers, though. Drops back for Sid. Who over for Cedric? Bear a ball! And Cam Cam has the glove of the gods. Stop shooting glove side. It's not going to work. He's the anti-Luongo. Third lines are still out there. We just cannot beat this guy. We finally get an offensive victory. Although Wakabayashi immediately gets killed by Bonvi. And now the breakout pass to Tarvine. And three on one developing. Big blocker save from Oshi. Yamamoto able to get the puck to Bishop. And now over to Baraball. Back for Bishop. Over for Baraball. It's broken up, but he recovers. 
Jonathan Barabal now to the point. Wakabayashi loses it. Recovered from Sidhu. Or by Sidhu. Back to the point. Barabal sends it around. The Sea Cattle can't recover on the defensive line change. The opportunity is gone. Reza and Yamamoto find space. It's Lucas Reza stepping in. Takes the short side shot. He is denied. Anderson Dolan to Reza. Tried to get the great pass over through the middle. It's broken up. That would have been a hell of an opportunity there. Again, the Sea Cattle over the blue line. The shot's broken up. Perry loses it. Puck low. It's Kilger. Over for Bonvi. Been out there for a long time now. Tarvinen. Into the Sea Cattle zone. Takes the shot. Easy save for Oshi. The Sea Cattle definitely getting the better of the player right now. The Sharks not able to get much in terms of offensive opportunities. But the Sea Cattle have not been able to beat Cam Cam in this overtime despite some tremendous opportunities. Anderson Dolan, Ham Hughes, and Machesny are out. Fourth line v. first line. The Sharks have the advantage. Can Schmaltz win the draw? He cannot. It's Mele to Machesny. Here comes the rookie Machesny. Might be a sophomore. Drop pass to O'Donnell. Back from Machesny. He scores! And we are going back to Seattle for Game 7. Machesny wins it in overtime. The quick give and go from Machesny to O'Donnell and back again. Machesny gets the winner. Look at that pass to O'Donnell and then back in front as Machesny's cutting across. He buries it. Cam Cam, as it turns out, is beatable. I like his little flop back in disappointment, by the way. <laughs> That's amazing. Huge opportunities on both ends of the ice. But after all of that, there will be a Game 7. We are going back home. 52 shots to 48. Rogalski with the hat trick. The hat trick of assists for Bell 4. Ken Keith was up there as well. After all of that, we still have one game to go. This is going to be one of the longest postseason videos I think we've ever had. Oh my god. Again, the lineup changes are able to spark a victory. Trading wins and losses up to this point, and it comes down to this. The winner will play the Winnipeg Jets in the Western Conference Final. And if there's anything to do here, it is to reunite the Yamagoa line. But I am going to have the top line be Rogalski, Belfort, Tanel. We'll have Jonas be with Barabal and Sid, who and Machesny actually is going to get the bump up as well. Although, I mean, maybe he should be with Ham Hughes. I don't know. Let's go. What do I want to do here? Machesny. I mean, Jonas there. What do I want to do? Sid, who's the best uh, defensively? I mean, Jesus, it's not like Anderson Dolan's that great, you know. Um, how's Sid who done this postseason? Barabal, Machesny. I'm giving Machesny the chance after scoring that goal. Uh, he is the better center. That works. That works. Rogalski, Belfort, Tanel, the Yamagoa line, Jonas, Machesny, Barabal, Anderson, Dolan, Ham, Houston, Sid who defensively, it will more than likely stay the same. Indeed, it will. Let's see what happens. Game seven. The biggest game in this series history, in this team's history. And it comes down to this win and we make it to the Western Conference Final. Lose and we may just see our best chance that we'll ever have slip away from us. <sighs> Let's go. First period and it's a rough start. Yasina gets the opening goal. We outshot them 13-8 to but we are down 1-0. Not ideal. Second period. Oh my god, no. Yasina and Schmaltz make it 3 to nothing. 26 shots to 17. Oh my god, are you kidding? After all of that. After all of that. Oh my god, man. Third period. Trent. Quick goal, 22 seconds in. We have a power play chance that we can't capitalize on. We're not out of this, 
Power play chance. Come on. Ah, oh, two power play chances go to waste. We're halfway through the third period. A quick goal, and we may just have an opportunity. Please. And after all of that, after all of that, we lose 3-1 to one in Game 7. How anticlimactic can you be? I just feel like the pacing for this episode is so off. Oh my god. I... Wow, I am so... I don't think I've ever been this disheartened by a video game. Within three minutes, the hype of the overtime winner from McChesney to losing game seven by the score of three to one. We are out. And I don't know what the future of this team looks like. Wow. Buffalo and Pittsburgh, San Jose and Winnipeg. Yeah. <laughs>